Hey guys, what I got for you today is another cooking appliance build video. What do I got here? This is something that's probably more interesting to a lot of you than my wok station build, but check that out if you're interested. This is an outdoor griddle, and this thing is a powerhouse. Uh, I've already used it, it works awesome. But right now it's all tore down so that it can be transported. So the key to this guy is this big power module that comes apart. All the burners are included in this module here. And you know, you could just set this up actually without the rest of the stand, put the griddle on it and use it uh, as well. But the, the stand makes it really nice. Anyways, the burners are custom fabricated by me as well. So I'm gonna put this guy together. It tears down for easy transport and storage. I made it modular. Uh, I'm super, super happy with how well it came out. So let's piece this guy together so you can see how it goes together. So it's got a power module. This is a piece of 18 gauge stainless steel sheet for a bottom shelf. These pieces here are for the frame. Uh, those are the side tables. And that is a piece of quarter inch plate that is for the griddle itself, the cooktop. All right, I'm gonna time lapse this, put it together. There we have it. That took about just over five minutes to put together. Uh, went together really well. So it's super portable, but it's ready to go. We have the electronic ignition. So this is gonna be the frame of the griddle, the top of it. And I'm gonna build everything off of this. I'm gonna have detachable legs. Uh, so I've notched out the one inch by one inch uh, stainless steel angle so that it fits together like that so it'll be nice and flush on the deck. And then I'm gonna square it up with this before I tack weld the whole frame together and then uh, add on the detachable legs. All right, so I've welded up three sides, three corners. I've clamped this down to make sure it's nice and flat because this my workbench is pretty flat and that's the key thing. Then I've measured across the diagonal uh, before I clamped it, then I clamped it in place. So the two diagonals are equal. And now I'm gonna weld in the fourth and I've squared it as well and it's square. To make removable legs on this uh, griddle, Gonna weld on some angle like this, and then on the inside or on the outside, I haven't quite decided, I'm gonna tap some holes on this so that I can bolt on the legs right like that. So it'll just make it really clean and portable if I need to move it around. So I've sheared off a piece of four inch wide, 18 gauge sheet, uh, stainless steel sheet metal. And this will be where the burners are mounted. So I'm gonna have it all the way around this top section and then the detachable legs here. So I'm gonna tap some holes for this here so it can be removable. I've cut four legs. These are one inch by one eighth inch thick stainless steel, same as what's on the main part of the, of the griddle uh, and they'll be attached on the bottom and the holes will be drilled and then tapped. So I'm gonna clamp it, drill a hole, and then tap the actual station itself. Now I'm going to drill the holes to tap the frame and I've clamped it. I'm gonna heat it up and then drill the holes for the tap. 
I could use cutting oil and then drill bit, but this is just so much faster. Using cutting oil, because stainless steel work hardens so quickly, it's just a pain, so I like heating up the metal nice and hot and then drilling it while it's hot. It just drills so much quicker working with stainless steel. I found that works for me. It just depends, your mileage may vary, but using cutting oil and just a sharp drill bit will work as well. holes on the main part of the frame here which is the top of the griddle and I'm going to attach the detachable legs now with some 832 bolts. Part of the frame is complete. These two front and back sides stay apart once these two side pieces, these side supports are removed. They're tapped with holes so that they can be removed easily and these two pieces can come separate from this top section. This top section will have sheet steel all the way around where the burners will mount. And that's what I have here, some 18 gauge stainless steel that will go all the way around. So the burner's on right now. The, very simply, it's basically a tube with an intake and an orifice, something like this, that shoots the propane through it, connected to a propane hose and a regulator down here. And that's the burner, nothing to it. Okay, if it was only as simple as that. There is a little tweaking and the size of the orifice hole is really critical to the size of the tube. I'll talk about that after, but I just want to show you the quick overview of this burner. So what we have, we have a propane regular down there, just connected to a 20 pound propane tank. That regulator is uh, just a standard barbecue one, a high output barbecue one, but it's low pressure, so it's under one PSI. Then. I have it hooked up to a ball valve here. Flare fitting to the ball valve and then into a 1 8 pipe, pipe nipple, which the pipe nipple is then connected to a plate like this. And then there is a nozzle, an orifice hole drilled into a quarter inch end cap or a one eighth end cap. This is all brass fittings. So, and then that is hooked up to this reducer that goes from an inch and a half down to three quarters of an inch to a one inch stainless steel tube with a whole bunch of um, bandsaw cuts cut into it.
now it's time to plumb the whole system together, connect the three burners together. I'm not going to use Teflon tape to do all the connections, I'm going to use pipe dope just because it's a hell of a lot quicker. system all plumbed, all connected, the burners hooked up. Let's give it the first test run with everything all put together. After a whole bunch of messing around and tweaking, the burners are finally mounted. So I might put a plate down here just to cover that pipe, maybe later for aesthetics. But I have the manifold all plumbed and then the valves are installed onto this plate. I cut out some holes here so that these valves could be mounted. So these control the gas flow. And then I welded a bar, or I should say I welded brackets in and then I tapped a hole for a screw here so I could have a bar that goes across which then holds the burner tightly in place and supports it. So that works really well. I'm quite happy with that. And then the whole burner assembly slips in and then on the back here there's a bar that's welded in and then uh, I have holes drilled so that the burners can be bolted in. Just a quick note about the ends of the burner here. What I ended up doing was I end up having to cut off part of it, flatten it, re-weld it so no gas would come out, and then I welded a piece of flat bar on it and drilled a hole so that it could be used for mounting. So that was just a slight little deviation from before. And that's it, it's mounted. Next, time to make the griddle and install it. The other thing of note is I've drilled holes on the top here that will be used for mounting the griddle. And there will be, be a piece of 3 8 stainless bar that will sit here. You'll see when it's all built, but I have four holes drilled there uh, that where the griddle will sit. Here's the ignition that I've installed on this side for the spark. Here's the one that I just made, and I will install it on this side over here. Okay, we got the module here. I got it plugged in. When I push the button, you can see the spark. That works really well. Let's give this a try. Propane is on. So I've left the quarter inch plate soak overnight to remove the mill scale and vinegar. I've left it covered. And now the mill scale just slides right off. You can see it here. Mill scale is just tenacious stuff to remove. So soaking in vinegar really makes it a lot easier. So to mount the griddle I'm going to use this 3 8 rod and I've drilled four holes all the way around and then these will sit in like that, which will make the griddle removable. This is a piece of quarter inch plate that I've cleaned all of the mill scale off of. All 
All right, now it's time to weld on some two inch sides. This is two inch by one eighth mild steel. The sides have been welded on. I put this in place on it, on the frame. And then I have this piece of one inch angle that I'm gonna weld on on the front here that will be used as an oil catch. Side tables with the hinges were welded onto the main part of the frame. I bent up a couple pieces of quarter inch round. And now I welded in two brackets here. So this will fit in like this on this hole here. And then this one fits in this hole here. And then on the table I welded in this brace. And then that just wedges and holds up the table right like that. This is the griddle itself. I gave it a good little cleaning. I ground down any splatter. It's a little rough, but the seasoning will cover that up anyway. That'll be fine. It's heating up nicely. Got a few, uh, I might need to just cut a few more slits in the burner so it extends back a bit here. But for a first test, it looks pretty good. So what I might do now is I might try seasoning it just to start the non-stick uh, coating on the griddle. Got a little canola oil here that I'm just going to pour on and just try rubbing it around and seasoning it. I might have to move this outside because it's going to get pretty smoky. this out. I've cooked a few things. I've cooked a few hot dogs. Nice even heat. I've cooked a few hot stickers. And the non-stick surface is working pretty good. It'll only get better as I continue to use it. 
and I'm getting a good heat, even heat distribution. I'm probably not going to add any additional slots in the burners. They heat this section up because this section is a nice staging section. So when food is cooked, I can lay it over here. So if this one's done, I can lay it over here, lay that one there. All right, getting the hang of this. It's looking pretty good. Non-stick coating. I like my eggs just a little bit crispy. I like the outside to be crispy, so this is really nice. So there we have it, the finished griddle. Hope you enjoyed this build. And thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you like this. And uh, all right, until the next project.